Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In this video I'll be showing you how to add a Roblox anti-exploit into your game. Now this is going to be super easy to do. This is going to be a really basic anti-teleportation exploit. Although this will be part of a series, there should be other anti-exploits that I will add later such as an anti-fly. However, this will be quite reliable. Not all of these anti-exploits work on every single game. Let's say if you've got a game with a teleporter in, obviously if you've got a teleportion anti-exploit, you might have a problem because it's going to think that your teleporter um, is caused by an exploit when in fact it's actually part of the game. So you've got to keep that in mind. If you've got a game with the teleporters in there or anything like that, then this will not work. However, if you've got a game such as like an obby, where you've got different stages, or just a game where you're just moving about, or like a, I don't know, some sort of role play game, then you should be fine. So if you have a teleport that goes from point A to point B, you step on the pad, it teleports you, that's when you'll have a problem. Before we begin, all the scripts used for this anti-teleportation, -tele anti anti-exploit will be in our Discord server, and the link for that will be in the description. To demonstrate this anti-exploit, all we're going to do is I'm going to move the ca my character, my character, I'm going to move it, you notice that it moves back. Now we're not just going to kick the player because there are, obviously, if you've got like a teleportation um, as part of your game, or any source of false positives, you don't want to just kick the player, that's why we're only moving them back if it's over a certain distance. Like so. I hope that makes it clear. So basically, if you go over this distance, then you get moved back to your last valid position. Okay, the scripts for this, um, for this tutorial will be in our Discord server, and the link for that will be in the description. Let's show you how to make it. Okay, I've just popped into our Roblox Studio world here. Now, let me explain a little bit about how this anti-exploit works before we go in depth into how to actually code it. Every second, we're going to see the position of our character, which is, as you know, a character. When we see the position, we're going to see if the position is valid or not. So, we're going to see if it's valid by checking it to the last position and seeing if the distance between their current position and their last position is too far. Let's say if they've just moved to the one side of the map, and to the other side of the map in one second, we most likely know they've got some sort of teleportation going on. So, that's how we're going to check. If it's over this set distance that they're not allowed to go over, then we're going to teleport them back to the last valid position. That's how the anti-exploit is going to work. Again, no anti-exploit is perfect. However, this is a very reliable one and it's server-sided, meaning lots of anti-exploits run on the actual uh, on the client, they run on the the player's computer, They're like your own computer at home. This runs on the server, which means the um, the player or the person can't just disable the scripts or just basically get around the anti-exploit very easily. So it's a lot more reliable. Firstly, when we're encoding this, we're going to add a folder into the server script service. I'm going to name this folder anti-exploits just because we're going to add more anti-exploits in the future. Hopefully, if you watch our new tutorials, this is going to be like a series, as I said. And I'm inside this folder, I'm going to add a script and I'm going to name this script anti-teleport. The first thing we're going to do inside the script is get the player service. Because obviously we're going to be checking <laughs> the player. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a, an array for last position. This is, this is where we're going to store the last valid position of the player, the character, sorry. But then going to add a function called new player. And then outside of that function, we're going to run the function when a new player is added to the game. And we're also going to run it for all the players in the game before the script starts up. Again, I think I've mentioned this in previous. I think I've mentioned this in. Oh, but I can't code. 
I think I mentioned this in previous tutorials. So let's say if you've got I don't know, 50 scripts in your game, this might script this this script might take a second or two to actually load up. In that time, a player could join your game, and then this player added function won't be run for that player. So we have to get the players already in the game for when this script loads up. That's what we're doing here. There we go. Now inside this load, uh, inside this new player function, we're going to do a few things. Firstly, when the player's character is added, so when, when there's a new character, what we're going to do is we're going to change the last position of the player to be nil. So when a new character is added, we're going to set the last position of the character to be nil. That's because let's say if they die over here and they respawn back here, then we want to know that we we want to forget about, about we want to forget about that last position because then they'll be teleported back over there because yes that this is, is invalid. So they die over here, they respawn here, the system needs to know that they've died basically. And that is a valid teleport. So what we'll do is when they die, we can accept the uh, the last position to be nil. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a spawn function here. I don't think this is actually particularly necessary. Inside the spawn function, we're going to do a while true loop. And we're just going to basically repeat this loop every one second. Every one second, we're going to get the player's character. I'm going to do a few checks for the character. First of all, we're going to see if the character actually exists. We're then going to get the humanoid. And the humanoid of the character. We're then going to see if that exists. And we're then going to see if the humanoid fruit part exists. Hey, if that all exists, that's come through our checks. We then also want to see, so sorry, now we want to see the current position of the character. That's a nice little function for that, get primary part C frame. And then we're gonna get that old position. So all we've done here is get the current position with the um, with the function get current um, get primary part C frame, which is going to get the humanoid um, root part C frame, and then we are going to get the last position that we stored in the last position array. And we're going to again we're going to store a position in that array later on. We're going to see if that oh we're going to see if that actually exists. If that last position value exists. And then if it doesn't exist, then we're going to actually store the character's position. So let's say if, if let's say it's the first time that this loop has run, their player has characters just joined the game, they've obviously got no last position, then the first thing it's going to do is set the last position to the current position. Can't do any checks because we haven't got a position before. Same thing is if the um, character died before, the first thing it has to do is set the current position. Set the last position and then it will run checks. Let's say if there is a last position so we can run checks on it. We're first going to get the vorb, uh, before position. So again, we've already got this. We've already got the um, before position, which is the last position. But what we need to do is we need to get rid of the y-axis. Now, this is this is this axis here. The axis goes upwards in the game. Now, that's because let's say the player is falling, which is quite a naturally thing you can do. 
they, the character can actually fall quite quickly. I'm not sure what the terminal velocity is for a character. But let's say the speed is pretty high, and then that will be over our maximum distance. So basically, we're going to have to unfortunately exclude the y-axis from our checks. We're only going to be checking, we're only going to be checking the x and the z-axis. Unfortunately, however, that's only because we don't want any false positives. If we start checking the y-axis, which you can do if you wanted to, then we'll run into problems where if the character is falling, they can fall quite fast naturally, and then you get a lot more false positives. So that's why we're only be checking the x and z axis. So what we're going to do is basically specify All we do, I think you've written the temp there. All we do is specify the x and z axis, basically get rid of the y. We're going to do the same thing for the current position. There we go. Next, we're going to get the distance between these two points. So the before position and the um, the, pull position, the before position and the current position, I'm going to see if they've teleported, basically. We're going to see if they travelled physically too far. So again, we're going to get distance between the two positions, which is before position, minus the new position, like as well. And we get the magnitude of that. I cannot spell. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the max distance. Now I'm setting this as a variable because you can change this to whatever you want in your game. Let's say, the game that, let's say you've got a game which has got a really, like, you coded it so you, they've only got a walk speed of like 10. Or let's say you've coded a game that's got a really high walk speed, let's say if you've got like a speedrun game. And they've got a walk speed of 30 instead of 16, which is the Roblox default. Then you can change this to be what you like. I've naturally set it to be the humanoid walk speed times by two. So generally, generally the walk speed is measured in I think it's studs a second. So 16 can't be it can't be studs a second. What am I about? Anyway, maybe it's 1.6. No. The, basically, Roblox, uh, Roblox has a set <laughs> walk speed, which is how fast your, um, your character can move. So I'm going to set the max distance that the humanoid can, um, the, the max distance that the humanoid can travel as the walk, as the walk speed times by two. Getting a little bit time, <laughs> getting a little bit time tied there. Don't need to check that. As so we know the max distance. It's not going to be nil. We're now going to see if the distance is more than the maximum distance. So let's say that they've gone further than the maximum allowed distance. Then we're going to teleport them back to the last value position. Which is done by like this. Now I've put this continuum in here because that will reset the while loop to be up here immediately and will not set the current position, which is a teleport position, as a valid position. So it will not run this other code basically. Okay, now running this code, let's see if it works. Oh, I've got an error. Yeah, that should be char. <sighs> How can I make these mistakes? Let's have a look. No, it's just the Roblox usual errors. Let's see if our anti exploit works. Coming in, let's move our character. There we go, look at that. Perfect. It looks like our anti exploits works. Again, if you only move a teleport a little bit distance, it won't teleport you back in a second. However, it's generally quite reliable. 
thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I know it's been a few, um, I think it's been a few months now since I last uploaded. It's because we're working very hard on a new product for Neon Blocks Games. It's a new game, hopefully. It's, it still needs a lot more work in it before release. However, maybe we'll get some spoilers eventually. So yeah, make sure you guys are subscribed and <laughs> get all notification bells up for that. I'm sure you'll love the game. Hope this, hope this video helps you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.